Okay, here we are in the Labor Day edition of Raw. Now, I do love seeing CM Punk star on the show. However, for some strange reason, when it's him and Nash on the mic, Nash just cannot seem to keep up with him. And Punk seems to just absolutely destroy him on the microphone. Much like he probably would in the ring. And then have H come down and then the storyline of who sent the text was revealed that Nash took Triple H's phone and sent the text to himself for the Nash getting fired, which is kind of, I don't know, the reason why Nash isn't involved in the match at Night Champs is because he didn't pass the, the medical exam that they have to go through in order to be cleared for wrestling. So currently he's cleared to do run-ins, but not a full, actual, complete match and take bumps. As to him being fired and then getting into a limo with uh, they, they've mentioned trying to do some sort of like anti-group which will either have Triple H at the helm or be against Triple H while well, H will try to be more of a more of a talent friendly COO and then almost kind of like a corporate group at the same time but that, that's, a, so that's, a, that's a story for a later day the team of Air Boom took on Jindal and the Great Khali while watching this match, I watched with a buddy of mine, and we actually had to stop and watch, and watch back every now and then because Jindal, for some strange reason, like oversells a move. Whenever Kofi leaves his feet to do any sort of aerial maneuver, you notice that Jindal will all of a sudden have one leg in the air and be already leaning back before he even takes the move. And it's like he's afraid to make a mistake, and in essence, he actually kind of blows the way the move actually would look. And of course, Team Air Boom wins. Okay. <clears throat> the bit with Kelly Kelly and Natalia on the mic during the women's match between Eve and uh, and Beth Phoenix actually really solid. For some strange reason, Natalia seems to have actually finally found a voice, and that voice is most of what we currently see in the E for women's wrestling sucks. That's why they're called divas and not women wrestling or women athletes. So you have two actual athletes, and the rest of them are all. I'm not saying they're not talented women. But when it comes down to being an actual, you know, professional wrestler or just being a regular diva, most of the current female wrestlers that, that Vince has, with the exception of, you know, Natalia and Beth Phoenix, are definitely a lot more suited towards the, they look better than they wrestle. Natalia and Beth Phoenix can wrestle fantastic matches, but they don't get over as much because it's easier to push a, a pretty face than pure athletic talent. It's the same issue with, you know, the, the men in the company. If you don't have that specific look, it's really hard to get that person specifically pushed over, regardless of how good they are in the ring. <clears throat> so then later on, the, the Miz and R-Truth came out and mentioned that they are going to take on the tag team of Air Boom. And of course, deride the name, which is great. I actually, the only thing their promos are actually missing is it's missing CM Punk. I think CM Punk would be a phenomenal catalyst for their promos because they are so weird and kitschy and like off the wall that I think if you toss CM Punk in there, they go from like this level here to just shooting out past the stratosphere. The match between R-Truth and Punk was ridiculously solid. You know, when, when R-Truth has somebody he can work with, let's be, let's be honest, Punk can work with anybody. Punk could probably make a phenomenal match with Zach Gowan, Gypsy Joe, Terry Funk. Punk is that good. When he says best in the world, he's actually pretty on the money for that. Now, all the weird outbursts of the real backstage talking to all the people who John Cena are not, or doesn't really get along with, okay, it made a great, a great main event for it. Okay, Randy Orton and Heath Slater. You, you can't have a guy called the One Man Rock Band and have him come out to country music. Slater looked absolutely horrible in that match. He went from riding high with Nexus, riding high with The Core, to... Is he still in the tag team with... with Justin Gearbrooks? They, they actually would have made a pretty decent team. Instead, he looks like he's the next person to probably may make it to spring cleaning next year before he's wished well at his future endeavors. 
<clears throat> and there's also another match that had a team of Otunga McGillicuddy take on Bro Kings, or Bro Skis, whatever you want to call them. The team of Zack Ryder and the King. Before Zack Ryder came down, they did probably one of the most elaborate video packages from his, his YouTube show. He was climbing up fence going, look, I'm getting over. I can draw money. It was, that was good. That was nice and that was definitely smarky. And of course, yeah, he got the, the, the Rough Rider and, and helped defeat the former tag champs. You know, decent match, hit all the spots he needed to hit, which, which worked pretty well. And then it's... John Cena came down and began to bash Alberto Del Rio. Then he got jumped by Barrett, Swagger, the Ziggler, and Christian. Only to be saved by the team of Riley, Sheamus, and Morrison. So those four guys fought each other in an elimination tag match. I love elimination tag matches. Because pretty much means everybody has to get involved somehow. And they did a great job pushing the following storylines, which is great to do in a match. <clears throat> they were to push the, the Swagger and Ziggler storyline. The storyline kind of going on with Alex Riley versus Ziggler and Swagger. You know, those worked really well. Pushing the storyline between Sheamus and uh, Wade Barrett. You know, really good stuff there. I was actually looking forward to seeing more of what Christian and Morrison could do. So I think those two could have a fantastic feud. You know, I think that Morrison and Christian, Christian could really elevate Morrison's game to a whole other level. And of course, with this one, the weird thing was, we first thought, you know, Alex Riley would be the first one to be eliminated. No. It's Morrison. Then a Rye. Okay. Okay. And then, then, then Barrett. Okay. And then Sheamus and Christian, double, double count up. That puts you against the, uh, the volatile team of Ziggler and Swagger versus Cena. And of course, you know, we've... John Cena actually five, five knuckle shuffled both of them at the same time. Now, of course, John in the past has been known to beat off multiple guys at the same time. I mean, he did it when he took on the Nexus. He beat, like, all seven at once. So him, you know, beating two guys at the same time, it's really nothing new for John Cena. He does it quite often. And of course, then Cena was victorious, and then run down by Alberto Del Rio... And on Del Rio, Raw goes off the air. All in all, not bad. You know, with, with Nash being fired, or Super Shredder, with him finally being fired, hopefully that'll free up some of the initial, like, 25 minutes that seem to get spent on the furthering of the CM Punk Triple H Nash feud, because the Triple H Punk feud is going to be good. I think they're kind of wasting it for night of champions. That definitely seems like it's at least a, a, summer, a Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, or a WrestleMania style match. That match, of course, has been changed to a no DQ. If Punk wins, Triple H is no longer CEO. COO. So let's just hope that, you know, when, when it comes down to it, he's not taking on new Triple H. He'll be taking on... I am the game. Triple H. Kind of conflicted. You know, I, I really do enjoy Punk. But I'm an absolute diehard H mark. That's why I have Triple H's signature actually tattooed on me. So, with that one, I know those two are going to bring out just a phenomenal feud between the two of them. Again, I think it needs to have more of a slow burn. I think this match, while it's going to be good, if they would have been able to hold it off to like Royal Rumble or Mania, it would have been an absolutely fantastic feud. And currently, it's probably the best, the best match on that card.